Hello everyone, this is You've Got 5 Options, a radio show where we prove that 5 is a magic number. Our experts will give you 5 tips on how to make your private or professional life better. We will solve your life challenge by giving you 5 different options to choose from. And our guests will answer 5 exciting questions while live on air. Tune in and feel the magic of 5. This is Marta. And this is Anna. And this is You've Got 5 Options show. And uh, I hope we are live on air. Hello, Julian, our lovely technician. Are, are we live on air? Yes, we are. And that's fantastic because it's Friday and this is when we have our live show. So if we are not live, then basically the whole concept just crumbles and and it has happened before <laughs> it has happened that's why we are home. <laughs> yes hello Denise. Hi. I, 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 I guess you are now getting uh, the atmosphere here so it happened actually twice okay that we were not live and we were starting to receive messages you know we are in the middle like what's of going them. on exactly and okay. then like guys why aren't you live what, what is happening and then you know you are in the middle of interview and you realize that you are not being broadcasted. So that has happened twice to us. That's why every show is uh, started with like, are we live? Can you hear us? But it really has trained us in ability to react fast it's <laughs> and good, right? adapt to whatever happens. Always so, learning. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, today mm -hmm. in our live show, we have Denita. Hi, hi, hi. Thank you for having me. It's amazing to be welcome. here. welcome. And we are going to talk about learning how to eat to feed your mind, body and soul. Amazing. And I am so excited for this show mm -hmm. because in the last few months I have really come to myself realize how what we eat, how we eat, where we eat Definitely. is so important mm. to how we thrive in yes. our life. So before we go into that specific topic, we actually first want to talk a little bit about you, Denisa. <laughs> like, who is that person? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So tell us, please, who are you? So my name is Denisa. And again, thank you so much for having me. I think it's amazing to be here and another great experience to learn, experience and see what is out there. So, as I said, my name is Denisa. Uh, I'm from Czech Republic. I have been living here in Aarhus for a while and traveling the world. Sometimes I feel I'm traveling more than I'm actually staying at one place. But awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. Um, I have been actually always, when it comes to food, interested in food. And it was always a huge passion, but I actually haven't discovered what is actually food before I started traveling because it was kind of normal thing, like eating a lot of veggies and healthy food was like normal for us. And then I went actually for 13 months to US and I was just shocked and all, it's like five years ago and it all started there with the food. And since I started studying like this health coaching in Australia and I took one year education in New York and just passion, 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 but also really holistic because I said no to uni education. I don't need anyone to tell me the old ways of eating. I want to eat the way our ancestors were eating and exploring these ways of eating. So that's really huge passion for me. And then it came to veganism and being vegan. And I think I'm the one of the most down to earth vegan out there. Like if you eat meat next to me, I'm like, yeah, sure, have it. This is your choice being vegan is my choice and I think we all need to respect what everyone is eating the way we live and instead of just telling everyone what they should be doing and eating we should just focus on ourselves and just living what we think is right and just be the inspiration out there and if some people feel like okay this is interesting I want to integrate it in my life then sure just do it but no pressure no like oh you have to do it otherwise you're a wrong person or whatever no 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 and I have been studying also business, so that's a huge part of my life. My parents are entrepreneurs, so it, it's kind of an environment I grew up in. And I have been studying marketing and also in U.S. marketing. 
and management and marketing here in Denmark and innovation entrepreneurship. So I have this like urge to be creating projects and working on projects and okay, what can we do here and then? I'm definitely there. I love to do things. I'm not waiting for something to happen. If I have idea, I'm like, okay, what can I do right now to make it happen rather than just talk about it? And that's basically with everything. But the food is definitely a huge part of it and health coaching and kicking people's asses. So definitely kicking. <laughs> I, I love this kicking people's asses connected with everything is okay. Even if you eat whatever you would like to eat and live however you would like to uh, live. It's okay, but at the same time, let's kick some asses. Yeah, okay, let's just do it. <laughs> that's uh, that's really great. So, Denisa, mm -hmm. what is so special about food for you, and how have you discovered it? So, I think, as I said, I haven't really paid attention to it because when I was younger, it was mostly like you know veggies. It was just there. But then, when I went to US and the family I was living with, I remember the first day in the evening. And I have been alone with the children uh, there as well, because I have been as an au pair and going to university. And the first thing when I asked them, what do you want me to make you for dinner? And the boy was five and a half and the girl was like two at that time. And the first thing they did was that they opened the freezer and showed me a corn dog and some junk. And I was like, oh my God. I was thinking like, okay, I will make them chicken at the time I was still eating meat or It's like, okay, I will just do it and probably that will be fine. But when they did this, I didn't realize until later how much that moment changed my life. It's like, is this really the way our children see how we make dinner? Like opening the freezer and just putting it in the oven and then it's done. Where's the social life? Where's the quality time with the mother actually making the meal? So I started like developing something there. And three months later, I just was like, I cannot eat meat anymore. Because also the production in US, like, it's nothing to compare to what we have here in Denmark or what we have in Czech Republic or something anywhere in Europe, basically, for now. And it was huge, like, f freezers everywhere. And it was giant. I was just like, oh, my goodness, this cannot be real. Like, what's going on with this world and billboards everywhere? So I think it triggered really there. And then in April 2013, I was just like, I'm done. I cannot eat meat anymore. I'm just like, I'm fed up. And I remember my host mom, she was like, you're gonna die. And my parents were like, oh no, please don't. Like, you need all the nutrients and everything. And at that time, I didn't have a community of people around me like, would be, you can eat this or you can do this. I was just like, I don't know. Like, I really feel that that's the right thing for me to do. And I'm going for it and I'm gonna learn and whatever it takes. I will do it. But back then it was also very ethical for me. I was just like, I don't agree with all this farming and all this. Yeah, I, I was disgusted. And yeah, it started there, I think. And then it just started developing and I had really crazy ideas and trying and doing this and this and that. And at some point I just really feel like I nailed it and everything around it is just working and I had my internships in like food companies and seeing expos, how is the marketing behind food? How is the trading behind food? What we can learn there also like, you know, the transportation as we are talking about as well, like, is it okay or is it not? So then I like when I'm looking back now, it's a, in five, the last five years, I have learned so much and experienced many things. And I am like, I want to know even more for sure. Okay. So If I get this co correctly, you are a wellness and nutrition coach. Is that correct? Yes. It's like health coaching. It's it's basically everything starts with food. Like everyone has different path, but the easiest is to start with food because that's something we can start changing right now. But there's also many, many misunderstandings. It's like we go to dietitian and what we get is six weeks program where it's like, okay, you will have this for breakfast, this for lunch, this for dinner. I'm like, it's bullshit. Like we are all different. Our bodies are different. We like different things. We have different backgrounds and we cannot measure everyone the same way. It's like, just think about it. Marta, for example, you, you are a mother of three children. How in this world can you go in the morning and measure, oh, now I need to have 100 grams of ham and 30 grams of this cheese. Like we cannot do this in this world. Like we really need to kind of change to what is possible in this world because otherwise you can do this for six weeks and you're like 
oh no, I cannot do it anymore. I'm going back to what was before and you gain again and you go back to old habits and everything. So there's a huge, I think, misunderstanding uh, in all this as well. And also the system, it's like school system. It's the same. Like we are just teaching everyone the same. Like when you are slow in reading, suddenly you are weird or, you know, your child doesn't perform good. I'm like, what if the child is better in something else? And it's the same with the food. It's more about, okay, let's take you and let's meet you where you are. And from that moment, let's see what we can actually do and really focus on you. I actually have to say that um, there are a couple of things that have um, struck me. I, I think we are having a certain technical problems at this moment, uh, do we? Let's see. <laughs> okay. okay, so happens, we got a cable. <laughs> we are very happy. Uh, and, uh, 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 ladies and gen gentlemen, I would like to uh, um, just announce that I am carrying a cable in my hand and I have no idea where oh, to shit. plug it. Uh, what shall we do with it, Julian? And I was asked to take care of more cables. So Oh, now I we have even more cables. Okay. Okay, we will so, we will let go of cables unless are we fine? You know what? I, I think uh, are we <laughs> are we still online? Yes. No, we will not play music today. It's okay. But thank you very much. Okay, so now I would like to say I know why I got the cable. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, you got Second it. Second of all, I will treat it as a token of uh, good luck. Mm -hmm. So I will hold on to the <laughs> cable <laughs> for the entire show, and I will use it as a, I don't know like a. Uh, what is that thing that the conductor is using for uh, leading the all orchestra? Is it a batut? Batat? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> I've never heard that before. I will use it as as such. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We so are I'm, back on the topic. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I have my cable. Couple of things, uh, Denisa, mm -hmm. about what you have said. First of all. Uh, my question is, uh, do you see this uh, certain schizophrenic attitude towards food these days? So yeah. either people are uh, like, you know, uh, stop the bullshit, stop the veganism. Actually, mm -hmm. vegans and vegetarians, they can be ruthless mm -hmm. towards others and push their agenda, but mm -hmm. they also get a lot of judgment, me included. I'm a vegetarian. Actually, now I'm a piscatarian mm -hmm. and I'm still being judged for that. I'm still being, you know, pushed to eat meat. Uh, so there are some people who have this. This is whole one big pile of crap. Mm -hmm. And then there is another, uh, I think, even more dangerous uh, school of thought that you have to follow a very strict, specific diet mm. in yeah. order to be healthy. And this is when we come to a situation when you have vegans, you have, I don't know, Paleo, mm -hmm. you have Atkins, I don't know who else you have. You have one million different types. And all of those propagators are fighting over trying to prove that my way of telling you how to eat is the best way. Yes. So coming back to the second thought, which I think it's uh, more dangerous. What is your take on that? I think it's really important to see that, again, one thing is that there's so much marketing. So we have been, just look at the commercials and everything. Like one commercial is fighting over the another and having education in marketing and also food and all this, it's like, oh my God, you just see through it. So my point is that at this moment, we are so overwhelmed with all the information. And then we are like, okay, one page says this, one website says that this product is super healthy and the another one says it's crap. So what should I believe in? So I think that's one of the big problems out there. The another thing is that we really disconnected. I think the problem is that we just don't follow what we think is right. We just don't see ourselves listening to ourselves. That's the problem. We don't listen to our bodies. If there is like allergy reaction or something, we just don't listen to it. We just immediately go to the doctor and get a pills. I'm like, no, why do we do this? It just doesn't make sense. So I think that's the first thing we really need to do is to listen, of course. And that's another thing. OK, what do you mean by listening to ourselves? Like we already know, like I am sure you have it as well, this kind of guilt. Like when you eat something, you're just like, crap, why did I eat it? Because you already know it's not good for you. 
Because then when you have something that you feel good about, you actually are satisfied after a meal. You're like, oh my gosh, I feel so amazing. This is great. I am thriving. It's just like, I feel the light. So we know deep on the deeper level, we all know there is nothing new, like we discover or something. It's there. We just need to listen to it. And that's where all these diets and all this actually crap comes out. But the good thing in all this is that we can take from everything a bit. So for example, I remember myself back in 2014, I was like, I'm going 100% vegan. That was just, there was no way to, to go. I was like, I'm 100%. But then year after, I always loved honey for my cousin. I was like, oh my gosh, this is like the best thing ever. And a year after, I still remember July 2015, I was like, no, this is too fanatic. I want that honey back. Who tells me that I have to follow this rule? Like I need to be put in the box. I'm like, yeah, it's easier for people to say I'm vegan. For sure it is. And I consider myself vegan for sure. But from time to time, I love to have that honey. So who tells me out there that I cannot have it? And that's the same with, for example, meat, you know, meat eaters. Like if you love eating healthy, but having meat from time to time, who tells you that it's wrong? And that's actually even my approach when it comes to meat. Like I don't, I had that as well. I had a period in my life and I was sharing all these crazy videos of farming and industrial farming and, you know, look at that and the animals are hurt. And I still really resonate with that. But I also learned that actually that's not a way to approach people, to inspire people, to change something because that has the opposite. It makes them angry. They're just like, what the? Then it's, are you doing? Why do you share this? Like, we don't want to see this. So instead of doing that, I was just like, you know what? Why don't I just share what I eat and what I live? And then maybe people get inspired and I could see amazing shift. Suddenly people, even my friend, Mess, I think if he hears me, he'll be laughing his ass off. He is like, Denisa, I want something from your diet. I want to try this, 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 but I'm not going vegan. Forget that. It will never happen. I'm like, Mess, and I know you love meat. And this is my approach when it comes to meat. Enjoy it. Have that piece of steak. Have it for dinner. But you know what? Sit down, look at the meat and say, yes, I'm going to enjoy it. And I'm going to eat that steak with passion and I'm going to love it. Because what we do is that chop, chop, chop. We have ham in the morning with some bread and then we are at the office probably. And then we have lunch in the office cantina and... Then we are like, oh my God, I what did I eat? All that crap throughout the day. So, I mean, let, 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 uh, have the meat for sure. That's my approach. Have the meat, but really enjoy it. Sit and say, there was a life in it. And I'm so grateful for having that meat and I'm taking the energy on me. So, and that's again, there's so many ways, like for example, with me and honey. And that again comes to, you know, vegan, they, vegans, they don't wear leather. I personally don't have much leather, but when you think about it, it's like, is it more ecological to buy five pairs of shoes in 10 years that are crap and will break probably soon? Or is it better to buy one good quality leather shoes that you have for the 10 years? So then again, it comes to the environment, right? So it's, I think it's really important to be down to earth and use your brain instead of following just something somebody out there is saying and talking about and we all know what is right or what is wrong and we all know what works for us but we just need to listen to it that is really really amazing approach and i must say that that's something that is for me this kind of approach is new because i was just eating before and i was enjoying some of the things some of them not so much mm -hmm. i have tried different diets but now food is actually something that is more like a ritual mm -hmm. and this is something very important so i would like us to talk a little bit about some myths and facts mm -hmm. about food. I have basically gone online and I have looked for uh, interesting uh, myths and facts about food. And I have the myth or fact that uh -huh. will be you to uh, tell us. Vegan diet is always healthy. Oh yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> okay. 
So there is a difference. Like, for example, when you go to the store, right? It's now it's a huge business, especially Germans are really good at it, right? We all know they are business people. So there's so many products out there. But the problem is that we have this, as you said, considered vegan equals healthy. But when you really learn to read labels and read it through, I go to the store and I'm like, from the vegan section, I would buy maybe only 10%. Because otherwise, it's crap. And that's the entire approach of this. Vegan lifestyle can be really unhealthy. The difference in what I believe in is the whole food, is the way our great grandparents used to eat. It's the way of taking actually the seed and creating that, I don't know, salad or growing something. So that's what I really believe in the whole foods, taking the real food, not the prepacked. It's even like when you look at the fake meat and yeah, all the products out there, I'm like, it's far away from being healthy. It's sometimes even worse than actually the animal products. And I think it's really important that we are aware of it and don't fall into this, again, food behind marketing because they will be always trying to sell us. And again, let's be honest, being vegan is trendy now. It's like in the last couple of years, it's really trendy. So of course, there's a lot of business behind it as well. So I definitely think it's more about the whole food rather than just buying vegan products. Uh, Denisa, can you please explain for everyone uh, mm -hmm. who might not know or uh, maybe know like me, but have uh, like a, maybe a weird definition. What do you mean by whole food? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, you know, like when you buy something in the box, it's like pre-made meal, for yeah. example. So let's say I want to make um, pumpkin soup. That could be an example. So pre-made would be probably frozen pumpkin soup in the frozen section. And then you just don't even want to read what is in it because it's sometimes like sugar and flour and all this crap. What I mean with Whole Foods is actually buying the pumpkin, buying the red lentils, using it instead of the flour, really using the herbs and putting in maybe the coconut milk. That's what is whole food for me. That's also all a recipe of my pumpkin soup, by the Ooh. way. Yes. But so c could we say that it is cooking from scratch? Exactly. Okay. Yes. That That is way more uh, familiar. That you understand. Uh, yes. Thing yes. for me. Uh, yes. Thank you for sharing that. And thank you for pointing this one out, because I think this is a myth that is uh, really uh, persistent, you know, mm. that vegan is the hip trendy thing, yes. uh, the millennial thing or oh, whatever. Yes. Uh, question, uh, if I would like to start mm. eating healthier, not necessarily going into veganism, because yes, as you said, it's not sure. necessarily the healthiest thing. What would be the first steps you would advise? So that's another thing is, like, I would like to start at VR having out there also like the gurus and everyone out there trying to push their ideas through. I think it's really important that we don't follow this, but we are get, we learn. I think there's the point, okay, instead of telling me what to do, teach me, show me how to do it, and then people will change. The Another thing is, what was it that you asked actually? <laughs> Let's say I am a guy, uh, no. A girl. Oh, sorry. Now I get you. That Where is to start? Yes. making the uh, buying all the pre-mates. Yes. I buy frozen stuff in a fridge. I go to, I don't know, McDonald's or any other yes. restaurant. I don't cook home and I would like to start. Yes. How is wh what's the way to ease in? Because yes. let's say I would say I will wake up in the morning. I will become a vegan mm -hmm. and then I will basically just go to the vegan section in a yeah. supermarket and buy the pre-made food again and again. And as you said, this doesn't really make a change. Yeah. So what would you advise as a first, second step? So that's the same with going on diet, right? Starting that, you know, it's Monday and I will start this six months pro program and I will have six pack and I will be the healthy healthiest person out there. And suddenly it's Wednesday and nothing <laughs> happens and you're back to where you used to be. And that's what I'm talking about. Look how crazy lives we live, like constantly busy, like you both are mothers, you know yourself how crazy the world can be. So you cannot change everything from one day to no another. For me, it was over a year before I turned 100% vegan. So it was slow process as well. First, you know, stopping with the meat and then stopping with the cheese. So it didn't happen overnight either. But what I mean with this is that we need to start slowly. 
you need to choose one thing that you can start changing. You cannot turn your life around within one day. So what I even start when I have clients and we go through health coaching, the best is to actually map what you eat, what you consider healthy and what you can actually change. So is it that, for example, when it comes to meal, right? So maybe it's having breakfast, lunch, dinner. When is the time in these three meals that you can actually really spend time on, where you can actually focus on? So if it's breakfast, start with breakfast. If it's lunch, start with lunch. If it's dinner, start with dinner. Mostly people start with breakfast because they're motivated and that's something it can be changed. So maybe some people eat just bread. I remember this client and he was saying, I eat really healthy. I'm like, okay, I want to see what you eat. And he was eating bread with ham for breakfast because that's what he considered healthy. But I'm like, that's perfect. But what if he would, let's, but he was constantly hungry. So I'm like, what if he would change it? And suddenly we tried oats and he's like, no, it really doesn't work for me because he was type 2 diabetes. With, I think I remember dates or something. Okay, let's try this. Oh, that's better. That works better for me. And we ended up with him eating like chia porridge and really enjoying it. But the thing is that he loves it. And it's something that he can be constantly eating because we tested it. We saw what works for him. If I would tell him, okay, it's amazing. Today morning, you will have 100 grams of oats with 20 grams of veggies. It would never work for him. So it's also like finding what works for you and what you think is healthy. And in this way, it can be the breakfast. But the one rule I would say works for everyone is start drinking more water. We are like so dehydrated. It's insane. Like what we do, wake up in the morning, have a cup of coffee. Then we have the breakfast Then we go to office. We maybe have one glass of water, having another coffee. We have lunch. We really don't drink much water. So... Look what you made You're good. good. A lot of Look water, what you though. made me do. I went for a bottle. So it changes everything a lot. Like, just think about it. All the toxins, even from the environment in the body, we need to splash it. Like, it really is there. And the more we drink, the better. But again, I'm not saying go crazy. Your body, you know the best how much water you need. Like, there's, of course, the general advice. It's like you should drink two liters a day. But if it's one liter is enough, maybe that's enough. Because then, for example, everyone's like, you need to drink at least like four liters a day. I'm like, I think I'm about like two liters a day. But then I also eat food that is not really dry. I have a huge salad for dinner. That is a lot of water in it. Or I have chia porridge or there's liquid in it as well. So it's not only just drinking the water. It's also like if somebody eats a lot of bread, just think about it, how much water is soaked with that bread or dried fruit. It's a lot of water we need to add in. So yeah, definitely would say just start with one meal a day and, and drink a lot of water. And drink a lot of water. Thank you for that. And there is the other fact or myth or maybe mm -hmm. a statement that I'm really, really curious to hear both of you uh, opinions about this one. I found it and it says food is energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is something that sounds, whoa, food is energy. What does it even mean? And how could we translate it to people that have never heard or resonated with this yeah. statement? What's your take on it, Denisa? So I can see that, for example, I definitely experienced it with the green food, with chlorella and spirulina and barley grass and all this stuff, because I am really... Like I have 120 chlorels at least a day. And <laughs> and I was like, oh my goodness, I have like six a day. And <laughs> so, I had six <laughs> and I thought I'm doing a great <laughs> job. So please, for the love of God, 120. <laughs> yeah, so I can actually with this, I can really see the shift like with the green food because it's like, just think about it. It's something that grows from the ground and then it's collected and there's so much sun in it as well and you're putting it in your body. So that's another thing. Everyone's like, you have so much energy. How, how do you do this? Because I don't put any junk in my body. I just give light to my body in a sense that it's easy to process and easy to digest. So by me not eating meat, it doesn't have to 
rotten in me first. So my body doesn't spend so much energy on processing that food. That way I have more energy to do things and spend the energy on other things. And that's the same like with sports, you know, like I'm not this weak person. Like I can lift. Uh, sometimes I lift even more than guys. And I was like, where do you get your protein and all this stuff? I'm just like, I eat so much food and it's so colorful and it's so diverse that I get protein from anything I basically eat. So that's another thing. All this, you know, another stereotype protein. And it's crazy how much is out there. So when it comes to the energy, it's really, when you look at it, again, you know, when you look at a piece of bread and when you look at an apple, naturally, what do you go for? Like feeling like, hmm, that's juicy and that's something that's sweet and hmm, that apple. Or do you want to eat that dry bread? Like you already know that that dry bread doesn't give you as much energy as that apple. So we know, and again, that's coming back to just listening to what we really think is the right thing for us. Anna, what about you? What do you, what, what is your take on this part that food is energy? Well, I will uh, try not go into a lot of details because I actually think that this time we have actually like always a very fascinating guest. So greetings to all of our previous guests. You are all awesome. I love you. <laughs> uh, but I think that the topic in itself is extremely interesting. So I will mm. only say this. Uh, I have noticed how uh, disempowering energetically food can be, mm. which could indicate that food is energy. Meaning if I eat a very large meal, that consists of things that are heavy, like uh, a lot of uh, sugars, meaning bread, pasta, and so mm. on. What do I feel like doing? Going and taking a nap, mm. right? I lose Especially all of lunch, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. As uh, the lunch time, mm -hmm. it's the it's like a, it's a zombie time. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's it's always that time when you feel sleepy. And I have noticed uh, that when I am mindful about my eating, when I shift either what I eat or when I eat, I have energy for the entire day. So if I can draw a parallel between uh, eating a certain heavy type of food that my body consumes a lot of energy on digesting, and that makes me weak and mm. sleepy, mm. then I can definitely say that yeah. other type of food will make you energetic and will be your fuel. So. I would say let's let's be careful with that with that food that we are eating because uh, we can basically yeah lose a lot of energy daily. Yeah. And I think I would just like to add that there's a lot like everyone is telling us how we should eat, you know, that the, the kind of guidelines like you should drink 2 liters of water a day and you should have five meals at least a day. I'm like again, how on earth like we can do this? Like just think about all the prep. For example, I'm fasting every day 16 hours where I don't eat. So I only drink or I have like uh, like clean vitamin C or MSM or the wheatgrass, barley grass. So I add that in. But again, the energy comes because I give the body a break from digesting. So once I have a big meal in the evening and then I eat the next day at 12. So I basically, you could say like I have breakfast at 12 and around maybe 9, 10, I start feeling this hunger. And again, who says that hunger is bad? It's actually a good thing to feel hungry. It's good to train yourself that feeling hungry is actually a good thing because then you don't have this like, oh no, hunger, I need to eat now. So that's, you know, another thing is that we need to listen to what works for us. Uh, I totally agree and I think that uh, both Marta and I actually I intuitively and since mm -hmm. I was a kid I was trying it's called intermittent fasting right yes. so I'm I'm a person who usually doesn't eat breakfast I am never I was never hungry in the mornings and I also had a problem with being uh, enthusiastic for lunch so mm -hmm. many times my first meal was somewhere in the late afternoon yeah. and uh, yes it's not healthy according the to the books that I'm eating in the evening but I was eating late afternoon, evening. That's when I was eating. I was totally fine with that level mm -hmm. of energy. And uh, I had no problems with keeping my weight. I felt energetic. I could stay up long, wake up early. 
uh, sleep only five hours. So I could definitely see that this is how it works. And every single person, you need to eat breakfast. Breakfast mm, is the yeah. most important part of your day. This is the most important meal. Uh, so uh, I was many times, uh, let's say... Uh, uh, criticized for the way I eat, mm. either because I skip breakfast or because I don't eat meat. Uh, so, and I, I, after some time, I, I just thought, fuck it, you know. <laughs> like, yes. Yeah, I, I think I, I know what, uh, what, what, what works the best for me. And, you know, explaining myself why I don't yeah. eat breakfast. At one point, I was like, you know what, uh, just get off my yeah. back, you know. Yeah. But thank you for debunking <laughs> another fact about that uh, having breakfast is a must do. I'm really happy that we could also. <laughs> <laughs> we I, ha could I haven't seen those myths. So. Uh, that we could uh, bring another one to the picture. But I have this one and I'm actually dying to ask it because mm. that's also the topic of the show today. When we don't nourish our body properly, we impact not only our body, but also mind and soul. Mm. And I'm really, really curious to hear, Denisa, what is your take on this one? So what I want to say is that if we eat junk, we are junk. That's like there's no, no other way. Just think about it, how people in the environment we live, like people are stressed and people have, you know, poor sleep and just waking up so many times during the night people i have never actually knew about it until i really started focusing on this that people actually have a hard time to sleep because i i go to bed and i sleep five six hours and i'm up again and i was just like how is it that people cannot sleep so what i'm trying to say is that when we eat well we don't put you know there's also this like kind of the brain fog that's like i feel all this junk like think about it the sugar it's crazy, like how much sugar we have in our everyday life. Coffee, like coffee and sodas. And I can see it at the office as well. Like, I'm, you know, I will bring out my green stuff and I see the guys running there on coffee and sodas. And then they go to have lunch and they're falling asleep. So, of course, it's affecting everything. It's I can also see that how much when I started changing my diet more into like clean eating, e even though I was always eating pretty well, I could start also developing the intuition. And that's really interesting. And of course, this is something people need to believe in. It's something that cannot be forced or like pushing people into if they don't believe in it. But I could also see that suddenly like I was more intuitive and more connecting to people and more understanding people. So I can definitely see how actually it affected my mind. And I can also see like how bright my mind is. Like I sit and I can immediately focus. I don't have this like my thoughts running around and I can immediately focus or I can immediately go into the meditation because I have no junk I would be putting in my body. And that's not only the food. I mean, it's also the thoughts, right, we have. So it's like taking that. And that's what I'm saying. I have fears as well. I'm not... Like, oh, shiny, everything. There are fears and there are doubts for sure. But I think that's also the thing how we are looking at it. It's like, hmm, okay, I'm afraid of this. So, okay, am I going to let it to affect me? Or am I going to, you know, stand up and challenge myself and kind of overcome that fear? And I have always been doing it. And I think that's also why I thrive today, because I'm not afraid to challenge myself, to go for it. And, of course, there are fears always, like, Look at you, like you, if you would be afraid of running a show, you wouldn't be probably sitting here today. So, and this is everything connected. And I'm really, I also really developed this pattern connection when it comes to emotions, because that's something also when it comes to health coaching. And that's another thing I was, I would advise anyone out there to take health coaching or even coaching education, because I remember back then it was something I had to first coach myself in order to be there for others as well. So it's affecting everything, everything. And I think that's the problem is that we don't know where to start. People want to be healthy. We want to be happy. We want to thrive. But it's like, okay, I want this, 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 and I want this, this, this. But we have all these, like would somebody say, role models out there and they have perfect life. And I'm like, yeah, that's amazing. But let's be realistic. So we need to start somewhere. And for me, in my eyes, the food is the game changer because that's something we can start changing right now. 
get off the, that junk, start eating something, maybe start with the breakfast, lunch, whatever, maybe it's a snack, maybe it's starting more, drinking more water, maybe reducing the screen time, anything. Because if you ask yourself that question, really sit down and ask that question, close your eyes and ask, what should I do right now to be happy? In maybe three months, in maybe a month, what is that one thing I can start changing right now? So there is also like, I would like to share this Kaizen approach. This is Japanese technique that nothing can be changed in one day. Nobody, like the world wasn't invented in one day, but step by step, it's also when it comes to exercising. Like now I have really down period, but last year I have been training every day, like six pack in a sense, like skating all the time, like inline speed skating and running and training for Nordics, Nordic race and everything. And I was still vegan and I was still eating healthy and I was still able to do it. But I got injured on skates when I felt in like we were going like over 30 kilometers an hour and I felt and suddenly I went down and I still I'm still in that process. I'm still in the period. Where I'm like, oh, going back to the gym, you know, like lifting. I'm not sure if I can do it, but I'm slowly getting there. But it takes time and we cannot push ourselves all the time. So now I'm like, instead of punishing myself or like, you should train more and you should do it. I'm like, you know what? I'm enjoying this period because I know it's coming bad, back and I really enjoy this. So it's affecting everything. Thank you so much uh, for this beautiful speech, Denisa. And to all of you who are sitting there and listening to it and thinking, oh my God, I would really like to change the way I function right now and I don't know how to do it, you guys can follow Denisa. Denisa mm -hmm. got really into that food department, <laughs> food department. On, the, uh, on the healthy side. And of course, all the information will be available on uh, our website, on the5options.com and on our Facebook page. You've got five options, so you will definitely be able to reach out to Denisa. Now I would like us to move to the last part of our show where we have five questions mm -hmm. that we have asked to our uh, network. Mm -hmm. And uh, to some of those questions, I just they will just be a little bit of an information. And uh, the other ones, I will also la ask you ladies, what mm -hmm. is your opinion? Mm -hmm. So the first question I asked uh, was simply, you know, what kind of diet people have? Mm -hmm. uh, just for our information, how is the distribution in the internets of the world? Mm -hmm. And uh, I just simply ask vegan or carnivore diet. And then I gave a few options. And it is interesting because we have 25% of people saying that they are vegetarian, meaning that they eat veggies and some milk, eggs. Mm -hmm. I just gave them some ideas so that they could yeah. resonate with Because more or less on a high level. <laughs> yeah. yeah, what is what? Then it's uh, equal between I'm vegan, I eat only food that comes from plants and whatever feels good in my <laughs> stomach, which I think it's, it's amazing. great. Yes. I think this is it's quite great. And then we have 20% on the carnivore, which mm -hmm. means I eat meat. There is no pescatarians in okay. the network. <laughs> so no people That's who weird eat fish. because I am. Yeah. So that was just an information just to mm -hmm. know with what kind of respondents we had something. Wait, to Marta. So 25% said that they are vegetarians. Yep. And then there was the vegans. How many? 22.5 and 22.5 whatever feels good and 20% carnivores. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yes. And no piscatarians. No piscatarians. Piscatarians no. that I know, I am extremely disappointed in you for not <laughs> voting. Yeah. You, Marta, included. Yeah, I did not vote in the <laughs> Uh, that's true. You're going down, girl. Yeah. <laughs> we, we are both vegetarians and uh, there is no one to represent us. But it's again what I mean, right? I'm vegan myself and I remember before I met some people, they were like, oh, can we eat meat next to them? Like, yeah, of course, go for it. And I think this is a healthy approach, respecting each other's way of living and eating rather than pushing our ideas through. But let's meet people where they are and just have fun and affect and inspire each other in different ways. That's a very that that I think is the best possible approach. Completely agree with it. And the second question was, how important is it for you to consume healthy, nutrition, nutritious food? And here we had a quite uh, runner 
because more than 50%, 54% of people said it's quite important. I try to eat as healthy as possible. Mm -hmm. So this is quite a good result. Then we had actually 33% on very. It's one of my top priorities. And then we had 3% on not on my priority list and 1% I find it important, but I just don't find the time and energy to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So what about you, Denisa? Where are you when it comes to how important is it for you? To eat healthy? <laughs> <laughs> like I'm nerd. I'm really um, nerd in this. I'm just like, oh, can you show me this, this, this? And like sometimes when I'm talking with people or companies, they're like, oh my gosh, who's this person? She wants all the facts and she wants all the what is in this. And sometimes I even go as far as like, I want to see how the food is transported. I want to see how you transport it before I actually even buy it. They're like, what the heck are you? What do you want? So, and again, what is actually healthy? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, what can be healthy for me can be actually poison for you. So that's also really tricky. Yeah. So that but the question was how import, uh, important is it for you? Oh, for me. So yeah, it is, me. of course, what you consider. consider. I did not give any, yes. uh, you know, I did not give any it was healthy and nutritious. Yes. What about you, Anna? How important is it for you? It is very important. However, the practice of my life has taught me that sometimes it's impossible. <laughs> no, I, I have a great ideals. And actually, most of the time I am capable of eating healthy. And yeah. by healthy, I mean a lot of uh, whole food. I like mm -hmm. to say it, making something from a scratch when I cook. Yeah. Or buying very simple things like I make a salad with tomatoes with a piece of fish that is, let's say, smoked or something. So it's very simple things yeah. that I just eat together. But I am guilty of my self-indulgence in ice cream and chocolates and uh, some other things. Um, however, I think I'm getting sometimes... Uh, those periods when I'm really into that. And uh, when you were talking about being nerd, mm -hmm. about, you know, eating healthy, I actually remembered when I was listening to one of the podcasts of Melissa Ambrosini. I don't mm -hmm. know if you ever came across her. She's an Australian superstar doing a lot of different things. Well, what she have said, she had an interview with a, with a nutritionist like we have right now. And I remember when they were talking about asking in restaurants, what oil or mm -hmm. what type of fat do you fry your things on? Because, you know, different type yes. of oils get different type of reaction when they mm -hmm. are heated and so mm -hmm. on. And both of them said, it sounds cuckoo. But if we will more and more start to ask they will actually be more aware and they will maybe change those oils because mm -hmm. most of the oils that are being used for frying oh, yeah. are the, the cheapest ones, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. the ones that we should never fry anything mm -hmm. in, right? Mm -hmm. So I do have to say that sometimes I have those periods when I'm like super into checking all the labels, what oils did they use in these cookies and stuff. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'm just like, ah, fuck it, I'm going to have that huge yeah. ginormous cake. Yeah. And ice that cream. brings us to the third question, because the third question is, what is more important for, for health, ecologic ingredients or love and joy felt while eating? So I just thought about this because sometimes you actually get something quite healthy. Mm -hmm. Like there are those situations where what is whatever is considered to be healthy and you sit and it and you actually suffer. Yeah, it doesn't taste good. You don't like it, but mm -hmm. it's fully ecological, you know, from ecological plants. And you can get this piece of cake that is actually loaded with sugar. But you are in such a joy, a moment of such a joy. And you are like, oh, man, I love it. So what is actually better or worse? I was really curious what the internets have to say about that. And what is more important, ecologic ingredients or love and joy? 47 47% said you need both to stay healthy. Yeah. And that's probably, you know, around 50%. And that's probably also right. Then we had 25% of people saying healthy ecologic ingredients are more important. 22% mm -hmm. saying I don't think about it. I eat what I want. And then we had 6% saying love and joy are more important. Mm -hmm. What's your take, Denisa? 
So when it comes to psychological, uh, there's also like, oh my God, it's like, I feel like there are stereotypes in, in everything, but ecological, I personally buy as much as ecological as I can. And everyone's like, yeah, they still like, who cares? They put just the label on it and you just pay more. But I see it more as like a message we are sending out there. What we buy, what we put the money in, that's the message we send out. So for me, it's like, even though it's not ecological and they just put the label on it that it's ecologi ecological, I will just buy it. Because I was like, I want you to know that I care about what I'm buying. And look, look at the stores, in the stores, like how much more ecological and all this awareness we are creating by buying it. So that's for sure amazing. When it comes to the joy, uh, I think when it comes to the cake and all, you know, the sugary stuff, I don't think it's related to joy. It's more li related to we are used to it rather than it could be differently because I honestly, I eat chocolate every day. But I don't eat the chocolate I buy at a store. I eat 100% chocolate that I add maybe avocado, uh, avocado, no, coconut oil. That sounded horrible, but... <laughs> avocado, avocado, like, what? what is that one? And bananas. So I think there's many, many interesting ways. The only difference is that people just don't know how to do it. Or that can be actually another way. Like when I have my friends for lunch or dinner over, they're like, oh my gosh, this chocolate mousse is amazing. And it's 100% chocolate and tofu and all this stuff. But it's because people just don't know that it can be easy and simple. And I just would like to react to and now what you said is that uh, people just don't know how. And there's this like craziness in our everyday life. And what my approach is that I'm putting also these recipes together when I'm like, how can we make a meal within five minutes so we can actually stay healthy during the day and don't have to spend three, four hours every day just preparing the meal. So... It can be really fast, but we just need to know how that's the core of everything. I will just say that we don't have that much time For in sure. this show. So just if you had to choose one, if it was the ecological ingredients, would it be ecological ingredients or love and joy? If you had to pick one. I don't think I would choose either one. You would, I would. It's combined. It's combined. What about you, Anna? If you had to choose one of the two, which one would you choose? I would for the love and joy. And I would say just I know that we are running out of time to what you said. I think there is also something like an emotional Of course, attachment. emotional eating is big. Yes, uh, to food. For instance, for sure. you know, a uh, sugary cake that my grandma did or I was doing. And I remember birthdays or celebrations when I had that piece of cake. So uh, sometimes it's not that we don't know how, but sometimes we are just emotionally attached to food through the memories yeah, or culture yeah, we sure. have. So that's why I would go for uh, love yeah. and joy. Yeah. yeah, It's just like when you break up, you want ice cream, right? You want the sugar. So everything is emotions and it's connected for sure. Yeah. Definitely. And when we talk about emotions and having everything connected, question number four <laughs> comes in. Do you practice gratitude or mindfulness while preparing and consuming your food? And our respondents, 29% said yes sometimes and 29% said what on earth does it mean? Uh -huh. <laughs> so I guess they don't. And uh, then we had 18% saying nope, not my kind of thing. 15% said not really, but sounds like a good idea. And only 3% said yes. Uh, always and six said I'd like to but I don't find the time and energy and now I will be looking just for very quick answers mm -hmm. from you do you practice gratitude or mindfulness when preparing and 100%. eating your food 100%. 100%. 100% what about you Anna mostly while preparing definitely uh, mindfulness yeah mindfulness okay and now we have the last question which is how often do you eat for another reason than hunger? So it ties a little bit to the question that we've had, to the talk that we've had before. And we had 43% of people saying, sometimes I indulge in food for pleasure. We had 22% saying, eating is my hobby. So it happens that I eat for other reasons than hunger. 19% said, almost never. Food is for fuel when I am hungry. 13% said, I often eat when I am stressed or upset. 
and 3% said, I think eating is a great way to socialize. So I also eat when I am with friends and family, even if I'm not that hungry. Mm. What is your truth, Denisa, when it comes to eating for other reasons than hunger? I think it's a big challenge because... You know, I'm sometimes doing something and suddenly this new recipe idea comes and I need to go to the kitchen and do it. And of course, you try tasting it and combining it with this stuff. So it's sometimes like, oh, this tastes so good. So I'm constantly, I think, eating and I'm really enjoying it. It's like pleasure for me, but I'm also aware, you know, I'm aware of what I'm eating and I'm, yeah, just checking on it. So it's there and I love it. It's just, it's joy, it's passion. And once you're passionate about it, I don't think there's other way back. What about you, Anna? Well, uh, I definitely eat for other reasons than being hungry. Number one, uh, we are coming from a culture where it is actually impolite to refuse when someone uh, gives you a food when you come to visit everyone will push on you just take a little bit just take a little bit so Mm. uh, that's one thing and the second thing is I've noticed lately that many times I do uh, certain type of food because of certain occasions so when there is a independence of Poland day I make potato pancakes because my mother made it every Mm. single year on that day when it's Christmas I prepare traditional food that we eat on Christmas and I will eat it and I will try every single dish because that's a tradition even if I'm not hungry so there is a lot of occasions when I treat food as a celebration Mm. as a custom as something that is more than just eating as something that is part of my own private culture Mm. and something that I like to uphold in my household I know that most of uh, people that are a nutritionist would say that <laughs> this is not the most healthy thing to do. Uh, but uh, that's my take on it. Yeah. So for me, food is way more important than yeah. just uh, being a fuel. Um, it is also a part of the way I celebrate life and special occasions. So, ladies, we are approaching the end of our show. Thank you so much, Denisa, for being here with us. And I would actually love to have you in the new year to actually discuss in more details some of the more practical approach and actually discussing like these parts of like, do you have to spend hours in the kitchen in order to be able to eat healthy and, you know, come with more pragmatic uh, tips for our listeners. So if you will be up for it, it would be great. And for today, thank you, ladies, so much, uh, Denisa, for being here and sharing your wisdom and beautiful energy. And thank you, Anna, for being here and co-hosting. You're welcome. Thank Have you a so lovely much. weekend, our <laughs> listeners. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye, guys. Thank you. You are listening to You've Got Five Options radio show, where we hopefully convinced you that five indeed is a magic number. To catch up with our previous programs, apply to be our guest, send us your life challenge or just to see how do we really look like, visit our website, the5options.com. We hope you enjoyed this episode and that you will come for more. That's all, folks! <laughs>